Good evening, everybody. I'm Base 6286, and I come from Transylvania. We are here in Fire Emblem, the Sacred Stones. And I'm gonna stop talking like that. Alright, so yeah, we're back here in Ephraim's chapter, and we're going to finish this beast up and get moving into the final segment of the game. So, let's go save Renaeus. Again! The capital of Renaeus. After the twins' absence, seeing their home ruined by war brings them terrible grief. Orson, a former knight of Renaeus, had been assigned to guard Castle Renaeus. However, he switched allegiances, betraying his oaths of loyalty to his homeland. Ephraim marks his homecoming by vowing to see Renaeus healed. Again. Chapter 16, Ruled by Madness. Alright everyone, we're back. You might be wondering, hey, where'd this story go? What's up with that? Well, yeah, the story in this chapter is exactly the same as in Erica's chapter. We, I mean, we just went through it. There's literally, like, no difference. So I was like, what the heck? There's no, I mean, you guys are, for the most of you, most of the, uh, uh for the majority of you, I think, you're watching both uh, Erica's and Ephraim's chapters, so, eh, I, there's no sense in spending time on story that you guys have already seen, so there you go. I'll, I'll probably be doing it for the end of the chapter, too. I mean, it, it's literally the same thing. I don't know, maybe we'll, I'll leave like a snippet in there or something for something important. Maybe I'll leave the important stuff in there for uh, maybe one scene. But yeah, other than that, I mean, we've seen this story before. I'm not going to show it twice, so. And, um... This is basically very similar to Erica's chapter, although as you can probably tell, uh, some of the enemies are a little different. For instance, we've got some mages up here, we've got some different dudes up here. In Erica's chapter, this was a bunch of dark magic users. We had shamans and a druid. This time we have a bunch of heroes and a warrior, so it's a little different. Uh, Erica's chapter didn't have these guys down the side, I don't believe. And uh, we also have a <laughs> freaking berserk staff user up here, so that's going to be obnoxious. I think these, yeah, these guys have eclipses up here, so, and there's three of them instead of just the two, so, more, uh, testament that, uh, there we go, that, uh, Ephraim's chapter is a little more difficult than Erica's there, so, yeah, some, some different things to worry about, but largely a lot of it's going to be very similar, but we'll, we'll have a different team to deal with it all, um, we got Murr again, but of, of course I'm not going to use her in this chapter either, in this, in this, uh, story, whatever. Um, Ephraim's level 20, so I just got rid of everything from him. As you can see, I basically just give him, gave him a bunch of promotion items for uh, anyone that might need them that isn't already carrying one, like Cormag, and I gave him the ones for Joshua and Marissa, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. He's just kind of a, an item carrier right now. I'm not sure who will actually be able to use him. I'm sure Tana will because she's already level 19, so she'll probably be promoting in this chapter. But, but uh, we've actually done a lot better in Ephraim's chapter for getting everyone promoted, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, yeah, that's that, so let's just let's stop talking and fight. Fight though! Alright, so what do these guys have? An iron sword, so let's just send Cormac straight in and not be able to do anything. Okay. Starting out great. Um, let's do this. The reason why I gave uh, Tana an iron sword, even though she can't use it right now, god dang it, is um, when she promotes, she'll be able to, or the way I'll, well, actually she won't be able to. Huh. Well, never mind then. I forgot about how I was promoting her. Nor well, well, we'll get to that when we promote her. Uh, I'll talk about that more then. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that point. Uh, let's do this and have a uh, name he bring up at the rear behind Amelia. I'm just going to send Ephraim over this way next to LarHL. I'm going to keep LarHL up here because I gave her a restore staff. Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, that's right. Um, well, I'll take the care of that in a bit. Jeez, I'm just forgetting things left and right already. This is fantastic. Uh, let's send Joshua and Marissa up this way. Hopefully, they'll. My plan is that they'll be able to handle the axe users that are going to come in after these sword users. So we'll see if that plan actually works out. Uh, let's send loot this way so we have a healer over there, and of course Renak. And what the heck, Ross too. We're going to need some muscle on this side, I, I think. 
Um, I'll leave Ford up this end, I guess. Okay, for Large L, what I'm doing here is I gave her the Metasys tomb or whatever in this chapter in Ephraim's story here because I don't. I'm not using any pre-promoted units for it, and um, basically she's a healer, so she's going to be behind on the levels. I'm probably going to promote her a little early too. Not, I won't wait until level 20 just because it takes forever to get healers up to level 20. So I'm giving her this tomb here just to boost her uh, level gaining a little bit so that she won't be so behind even though I prom I'll promote her early. And uh, now, now that we've used up that, I'm going to take a restore staff here and keep her on hand so that she can, uh, if someone gets berserk, she'll be nearby to take care of it. So, alright. Now we should be good to go. And, well, this works out well. We get to use the last of the Iron Lands to finish that guy off. Ah, giving crap for experience, though. Hopefully those Axe guys won't actually be able to reach any of my uh, flyers. That'd be kind of bad. And they all went after Tana. Oh, well, I guess I do kind of want her to level up, so... And, okay, fine. Watch, I bet Cormac can actually two hit this guy. And then he'll finish him off. And, yeah. <laughs> now my sword users don't get any experience. That's lame. They're way behind on levels. It's really. I guess I just didn't level as evenly in uh, Ephraim's chapter here. Because I have a bunch of promoted units, but, like, Joshua and Marissa are just way behind everyone else. They're still at, like, level 16, I think. Whereas pretty much everyone in Erica's chapter was all kind of around 18 ish. So, uh, oh well. And Erica's going to be even further behind because she's like level 15 and I didn't even bring her into this chapter, so. But I think it'll work out fine. Let's just. I guess we won't be steel blading that guy. I don't want to waste the killing edge, though. Well, maybe I'll just go after him with Marissa instead. 17. Okay, we can do it with the steel sword. Marissa will get the ex ow, experience. Alright. I'm going to be promoting Marissa differently in uh, Ephraim's chapter here than I did uh, in Erica's, so there'll be some differences to see there. Uh, yeah, we'll just stick with that. Can loot get up to... No, she can. We'll just heal now. Zoop. I wish there was a way that you could, like, keep battle animations on for when you're actually like, attacking enemies, but turn it off for when you're healing. Because, I don't know, the healing animations are kind of lame, but the battle animations are pretty awesome. Well, oh well. We'll deal. Okay, let's do... You should be able to... Yeah, I was going to say, this guy's a freaking soldier. You should be able to finish him off without any problems. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to do that every time now, a weapon breaks, just for no reason. Do I want to do this right now? Oh, jeez, look at that critical hit. She's only using a short bow. That's absurd. Imagine what she'd have with a killer bow. Ah. Uh, um, oh, I, all right. Yeah, let's just finish this guy off now. Uh, well... Just to make sure, okay, he can't reach us yet. I want to keep an eye on that Berserk staff user, because seriously, Berserk is pretty much the worst status effect that you can get in this game, I think. Come on, critical, critical, critical! Oh. Oh well. 30% is a pretty high critical rate, by the way. Um, your average character probably isn't going to get much higher than that. Um, the only ones that usually do... Uh, get anywhere above like around 40 or higher are gonna be the ones that uh, come on critical yeah oh well it wasn't really that much of, of much use but it looked cool so we get to see the critical for the ranger now anyways yeah most characters are gonna be between 30 35 for a, a, the highest critical hit you're gonna see on them and that's usually you have to get them a, a killer weapon or something to reach that but uh Berserkers, uh, Rangers, um, Swordmasters, definitely. Um, they're the ones you can generally at least get up to the 40s, if not a lot higher. 
for uh, just your average critical hit rate. Of course, it's, it's going to change a little bit for when um, you have supports, because that, that's going to boost things, but your average uh, normal critical hit chance that you'll see will, is going to be around 30, 30s for uh, critic, for killing weapons. So, I don't know. Just random information, I guess. I don't know. Just something to talk about. Um, man, this is going almost too smoothly. Alright, let's get up here. And, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's wait until... Where's this berserk? So right here, right below this corner. Let's inch... Yeah. Let's inch large owl up first. Just to make sure we don't, uh... Get ahead of ourselves. We should be safe there. I mean, I'm not... I'm kind of a... Assuming that the the Berserk Staff user isn't going to have too high of a chance at actually getting landing a, a hit on us, but yeah, nah. I always want to be on the safe side with that because I don't want him berserking a character and then them turning on me and annihilating everyone. <sighs> my sword, my Myrmidons here are just a little, little too slow. They can't keep up with my flyers too well. Oh well, let's uh, do this. Tana the Mage Slayer. <laughs> one damage. What do you think you're going to do with one damage? Alright. And then... Cormay can swoop in. And one-shot? Yeah. Cormay can one-shot everything. And by everything, I mean not everything. Mainly just mages. Because they have low defense. But, yeah. It's still cool. I like one-shotting things. It's always so satisfying when you can just, like, take something out in one hit. Alright, and Renax kind of bringing up the rear, but not too big of a deal. Alright, Lara Jo can probably... Oh, she can get up here now. Well, cool. Let's, uh... Let's get you right here. I think that should be fine. I probably should have given, uh, Naomi a longbow or something. That may have been a little more useful, but alas, I did not. Oh, oh he can support Ford. Eh, I won't deal with that right now. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with, uh, what? He didn't go? Oh, okay, fine. Anyways, I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with, uh, secondary supports, because you can have more than one support. You can have a total of, uh, five conversations, so... Like, you could have, uh, the highest you could have would be, like, an A support and a B support, or, like, two Bs and a C, or five C supports if you wanted to do that. Um, uh, generally, I think it's good to get at least one A, though, because it gives you the best, uh, the best stat increases overall. Like, a C support, you're not really going to get a whole lot out of it, so I generally don't bother with those. I usually, if I do multiple supports, I'll get like an A and then a B, but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to bother with that here. Well, let's do this. Just because I don't know, like, I haven't really set up a, a tree, I guess you could say, of second, secondary supports. Usually if I do something like that, I have it planned out so where I know who's going to su be supporting who, and then for both their main supports and a secondary support, so then I can kind of plan out who's traveling in what little groups and things like that. And, uh... Yeah, it gets kind of ridiculous, but... Oh well, that's what I like to do, I guess. Man! That 20 base critical, it's so crazy to me. She's probably gonna kill this guy. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, watch, she gets a critical now when I don't want her to. But she didn't. So, let's do this. Finish this guy off. Ha! Get rid of that odd use of an Iron Lance. Nice. Amelia's slowly gaining experience. I'm not sure if I'll actually get to level level her up but in this chapter, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Let's move you here. And let's not move you too far up. I don't want <laughs> Lari Chell accidentally getting berserked. Although, I don't think the the dude with the staff would do that since they wouldn't really gain him much of anything except <laughs> I guess getting my character to suicide but now poor Cormag he has no resistance 
Uh, so they're all going to gang up on him because of that. Oh well. I feel like there's a lot more mages in this, in Ephraim's version here. Maybe that's just me. Even I don't know though. Cause I mean, he, no, maybe. I don't know. It seems like less because they, they switched out the the batch down here. But at the same time, like I feel there's a lot more. And whoa, that thief appeared in a different spot. He appeared from uh, up here last time. That's odd. Well, now it's kind of a race to get a. Uh, around to where he is. If a thief, I'll mention this now, if a thief manages to get to a treasure chest and uh, pick what's inside, I'm pretty sure as long as it's not gold, um, yeah, as long as it's not gold, then they'll, uh, what am I trying to say? They'll, you'll still be able to get it from them. They'll have it in their inventory, and they'll drop it when you kill them, so. Yeah, don't fret if uh, a thief gets to a chest before you do. As long as you can get to the thief, before uh, it manages, manages to uh, escape from the map, then you're still good. And uh, they'll escape by just getting basically to like some designated spot that's usually leads to off screen. Usually they'll try and return, I think, to where they came from, but uh, it, it kind of varies depending on the map you're in. For this one, he'd probably try and head back to the stairs, but. Um, some other places they could escape to would be like off here to the side where there's like no wall or down probably maybe like down over here somewhere all places like that they can escape as long as there's not like a wall blocking their path then uh there you go all right let's do this we had some dudes appear up here so we want to keep larichel away from them and Ephraim since he can't actually attack I'm trying to get around to this Berserk Staff user before he manages to, to do anything to me. Uh, let's fly Tana around this way. Uh, let's keep her up here, though. Um, let's do one shot. Not that guy, but you can do this guy. So that works. Probably going to want to heal Cormag, too. Haha, -ha, level up. Something good? Yeah, I'll take that. More speed. Joshua's speed is a little low. That's kind of odd. Figured by now it would be uh, a lot higher than that. Alright, you still can't one-shot people because you're Marissa and your strength isn't the best. But I, th I do think it's better in uh, Ephraim's chapter here than it was in Erica's. Oh, level up for Marissa too. I guess we'll find out. Oh, well, not much, but... <sighs> God dang it. Marissa, you're killing me with these terrible level ups. All right, her her strength is a little bit better though, because I mean, if you remember last time, she had like a ten or eleven around level nineteen, and she's only level seventeen now, and she has that same amount. So we're doing all right. Uh, let's just move Cormag right here. Oh, well, let's do the support. Cormag, thanks for warning me the other day about that archer. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know how I reverse that. <laughs> Your rival startled me, but I think you may have saved my life. Well, you should thank him, then. I can't take credit for it. I mean, he started shrieking out to you before I even saw that bowman. Really? That's amazing. In that case... Thank you. The bond between a wyvern rider is close, and this guy's a smart one. I'm sure you and your pegasus are the same, wouldn't you say? Oh yes, it's the same with every knight in her pegasus. It's so sad to see how war has changed the way we relate to our animal allies. It's taking such a tremendous toll on these beautiful creatures. I agree. This whole war is ludicrous. War itself is madness, even more so if it's for the greed or the fantasy of power. I hope our efforts to end this war quickly. Uh, I don't want to see anyone else die. Nor do I, but you cannot race headlong into battle. We'll need you to help rebuild our shadow nations, after all. We soldiers are expendable, but your regal types aren't. Are you regal types? Cormac, don't say that. But it's true. No, no life is expendable. Your Highness, don't throw your life away. Promise me, will you? As you wish, Princess. I'll be careful. I have your promise, Cormag. Aw. It's an interesting little conversation there. It's kind of cool because, like, you get to see some, uh, interaction between like uh, Tana who's a princess and Cormac who's just like your average Joe Smo soldier 
I don't know, I find it interesting, because, like, normally they just kind of keep the, uh, nobles away from all the commoners, except for maybe your, uh, main lords and stuff. But even then, they just kind of interact with their own knights, not really so much anyone else, but I don't know. I find these support conversations cool. <sighs> and they all went after Tana. Oh well. It, closer to her being able to promote, so. In fact, 43 experience away, so that's cool. And of course, they're all... Okay, I was going to say, they're all going to go up north again. <laughs> but it appears not quite. And is that Berserk Staff going to do anything? Okay, finally he's going to act, huh? He goes after Ford, who's uh, probably the most vulnerable, but he missed anyways, so that works out well for us.